We are certainly right now in this country out of the pandemic phase. Namely, we don't have 900,000 new infections a day and tens and tens and tens of thousands of hospitalizations and thousands of deaths. We are at a low level right now. So if you're saying, are we out of the pandemic phase in this country? We are. What we hope to do, I don't believe, and I've, and I've spoken about this widely, we're not going to eradicate this virus. If we can keep that level very low and intermittently vaccinate people, and I don't know how often that would have to be, Judy, that might be every year, that might be longer in order to keep that level low. But right now, we are not in the pandemic phase in this country. Pandemic means a widespread throughout the world infection that spreads rapidly among people. So if you look at the global situation, there's no doubt this pandemic is still ongoing. Dr. Anthony Fauci, thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. Good to be with you. There you go. Hey, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry about that. My VPN dropped off. No worries. I got to have my VPN, though. Hey, <laughs> what's a podcast recording without some... There's always... Yes. Some th- technical difficulties. There's always some <laughs> technical difficulties. Anyway. Yeah, yeah I, I, I guess... Uh, I mean, you could, if you wanted to finish your point, I don't know where you dropped off exactly, but um, you can do that. Or uh, I just say this: uh, what I, long story short, what I was saying is that uh, um, people can't ever own or take responsibility, and these are people who are always quick to say that on the other side that you should always take responsibility for your actions, right? So you figure that they would blame anybody other than themselves. I mean, excuse me, any, they will blame uh, themselves and not other people for the fact it is that they didn't get the vaccine or that they caught the Rona, but there always has to be somebody else that they can blame. I mean, you've even seen it from, from the right side when it comes to, because a lot of the people that were there on January the 6th when uh, they went to the Capitol and did all these particular things, these are a lot of people, almost, I don't say the entirety because no people are monolithic, but these are the type of people who usually think that uh, uh, the cro- the COVID is a uh, is a uh, uh, fake, or that mm-hmm. the vaccine is being de- being used to kill them. Right? And it's the yeah. same thing with that. They couldn't deal with the fact that my man just my man Trump just lost. They couldn't deal with the fact it is that people hated him so much that they just came out in droves because they didn't <laughs> love Biden. They just want to get rid of that dude for whatever reason. They couldn't face any of these other things. It had to be something that was done specifically to them. I mean, you even saw where uh, they even blamed Antifa for being out there and doing doing certain things, right? Yeah. And if if they would have found a way to blame B- BLM, Black Lives Matter, that were there in white face, they would have done that also. <laughs> but even they knew that that was too far fetched, right? They're like, yeah. ah, that one I don't think is gonna work. <laughs> yeah. So it's just it's just it, I think it's it, not anything. It's just a continuation of a lot of things that we've seen in this country since its inception that's getting worse and worse as things are getting harder for everybody that's out there. Right. Yeah. I, and I, and I wanted to bring this up too, because one of the things that is also becoming apparent with, with COVID is, um, it's long COVID. I don't know if you're like, how you're familiar with the kind of long-term issues that people are experiencing oh, yeah. that have been infected with it. Right. Cause now we're two plus years into this. So you've got people that have been infected once uh, mm-hmm. I was working with someone the other day. She's 18. She's like, I've been, I got COVID twice. She got the Delta and she, she got Delta and she got Omicron mm-hmm. and she's still like having some issues with her sense of smell. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to say this, Jared, cause it's like, how, how the fuck do I bring this up? But basically like they are now really, it's really becoming really apparent to researchers and just people who have gotten COVID that like, there is some serious long-term issues mm-hmm. that emerge, whether it's like chronic fatigue. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, there's a study. I almost want to like share the screen here. I wanted to show this. Uh, I think it's this one. There we go right here. Oh, shit. Can you see this? Yeah, I got it. Mm-hmm. Right here. It's the shows the news, the NBC News story. It's just published a bit ago, but this is like even mild COVID is linked to brain damage. So this British study they did, or they like scanned hundreds of people who had even mild cases of COVID, and they've shown that a sizable portion of them had lost like 
percent like a percentage of gray matter in in their <laughs> uh in their brains um and these are again these are people who had like not these weren't like debilitating this wasn't like or I should say this again. This wasn't like a severe case of COVID. Some of these mm-hmm. people, had, they were all very mild. Mm-hmm. So this whole bullshit now of hearing people talk about how it's like, this is just a, it's like a cold, you know, it's, it's pretty mild. It's like the flu. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's really, um, this is what's really, really starting to fuck with me is like, I'm realizing and it became apparent to me, I guess, a little while ago, but like COVID as it continues to spread and reinfects people over and over and over again, mm-hmm. and as vaccines wane in their efficacy and we have to continue to get booster shots or whatever, mm-hmm. the acceptance that people are just going to get it is mm-hmm. to me like incredibly psychopathic because what's going to happen is we're, we're seeing millions of people now that are that have been infected and reinfected with COVID in the U.S. specifically. Mm -hmm. And they're just more and more people are becoming disabled. Mm -hmm. And this is like a mass, mass disabling event. So all these weirdos that are pointing to the death, like the mortality rate of COVID, like, oh, it's less than 1% or whatever, which also depends on the demographic you're talking about, the access to resources. It could be anywhere from a little under 1% up to all the way to like 3%. It depends, Mm -hmm. right? What we're seeing now is people who just get COVID and they're treating it like a, like a seasonal virus. They're going to start noticing over the coming months and years, I have chronic fatigue now. I can't think clearly anymore. I, I can't go to work anymore because mm-hmm. of like, so it's just, it sucks. It's so sad. I, <laughs> I just, I feel like even people who take all the precautions and really do care about it and do all the right things. They're just going to get fucked. So like there is that schadenfreude, I think is the word where you like see people who are just like full on assholes who are like coughing in people's faces and they're like, you know, attacking people, you know, those, there was like a slew of like right wing talk show hosts who are like anti-vax who are just like dying around. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like funny. You're like, all right, cool. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) yeah, That is satisfying. You know, it does like satisfy something inside us that are just like yeah fuck you you guys like spread like terrible information to all of your fans for so long and then you died from the thing that you were denying was a problem Mm -hmm. but yeah there's just this 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 fucked up thing and like i i just feel very i don't know man it's like this is the type of thing that i was experiencing when i don't know if you can relate this or or feel the same way but like when uh, i became aware of climate science and the severity of the ecological crisis that was like a process of acceptance like all right like this this is the reality i'm now like understanding it more now and this is i'm i'm accepting the potential of a human extinction event happening yeah. mm-hmm. within the century yeah um and now i'm like why didn't i consider or think about as a part of the broad ecological crisis we're experiencing globally we're going to experience more of these like zootonic viruses that are just going to debilitate and mangle and fuck everybody up over the coming decades. And of course the capitalist economy and those that run, you know, who, who profit from it extensively are not going to do jack fucking shit about it. So more and more people are just going to get sick and you know, it could be 1% fatality rate. It could be 50%. It could be fucking Ebola. They're just going to try to keep people to keep on going and keep on working and doing everything. And I'm like, where's the line for people where like we just refuse to give our bodies over to a a, a system that just like, I mean, obviously there's always been resistance and there's always going to be pockets of it. But like, I knew that at the beginning of the pandemic, like we weren't really going to have a mass movement uh, to address the concerns around this because the first people to really protest were the right wing assholes who were saying that this was tyranny, that they were being forced to wear a fucking mask and they couldn't go to Applebee's anymore. Pretty much. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's, this is, this is a culture of just, of, of narcissists and psychopaths. And, um, I'm just going to have to do the best I can to take care of myself and my family and my friends and, and try to build, if there is a possibility of building a community of people that actually give a shit about one another, you know, if that is possible, which I haven't really done really in a, in a real sense, but 
I consider you a part of that. I consider like the guys at eight, you Thank know, attack you. and dethrone and yep. a lot of people I've met through my podcast work. And of course I've, I'm meeting other people as well, um, in other ways, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm really at this place of like, I'm just another level of grief or, or like despair is set in with this thing. <laughs> um, so, um, anyway, yeah. Well, I mean, you mentioned the, um, uh, virus or pandemic or whatever it might be. I missed the boat on that. I'm not gonna lie, I missed that. I got like maybe about four different books on that, a couple audio books, and I've had them for probably like seven, eight years now. Never picked it up, browsed through a couple of them like early when I first got them. I'm like, eh, eh, not really. I'm more worried about climate change, like water situation, things of that nature. Right? Yeah. Peak uh-huh. oil. That one just so that that it, it, I'm not gonna say it taught me, but it reminded me of one thing. You can't see everything. We all got our blind spots, all right? And I'm no different than than, than any than anyone else. And as far as the people are concerned, and I am like you. That's where I'm at in my life. And to be quite honest with you, I kind of transferred it over when it comes to uh, the climate situation or environmental issues in total, which is that I can only control what it is that I can control. Mm-hmm. All right. When a lot of uh, people on uh, my Facebook page, they're not only people I met online. These people I grew up with, some of them. Right. And mm-hmm. uh, they know I took care of my diabetic amputee mother from the time I was 22 to 36. Mm-hmm. And now I want to ask people. Right. Even some people that um, uh, that I just met online. A lot of times like, well, they commend me for taking care of my mother. Well, let's say my mother was alive. Who had a di- who had high blood pressure, diabetes, and had an amputated leg? Should I have not gotten the vaccine? Should I put her life in jeopardy? But like, I mean, if, if you yeah. think I was a good guy for that, what, what, what if I took the vaccine just for her? Just, just for her? Let's say it was just for her. Would I have been a good guy, or would mm-hmm. I be this monster that was doing what the state did, this slave? Right. 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 Yeah. I don't think most people have an answer for that. Because a lot of times I know when people don't have ants, they just want to shine and all. It's kind of like with the whole, uh, oh, the LGBTQ, or, or not. From if you talk with somebody who's a, a, a straight religious person, and mm-hmm. they say like, you know, like, a man and a woman, that's it. Well, what about hermaphrodites, right? Mm-hmm. Intersex people, they're born yeah. that way, yeah. right? No mm-hmm. choice, no nothing. Whenever <laughs> I've asked somebody that, they always have no answer, right? Yeah. They, 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 they just like, but then. You talk to them the next day, they're still saying the same thing. Yeah. So it's easy to just like shine it on when it's something that you really don't want to think about right. at an intellectual level. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of those mm-hmm. people that you say that like, they have an issue, you show that article about the brain matter that's getting messed up. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't think it's there's that much brain matter to begin with. <laughs> a lot of people. Well, see, been, yeah, but America. like this is kind of I'm, the problem. Like, I'm just being it, funny. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Uh, but I think kind of the problem is, is like people are doing. Like this is what's the the issue for me is like, um, because all the mask mandates are lifting and everything. Like I hear all the time from people like I don't know if I should send my kids to school anymore because they're literally the only kid in class wearing a fucking mask. And if you're the only person wearing a mask in a room of like thirty plus people, whatever it is, depending on the classroom you're in or or the building you're working in, whatever it is, it's a matter of time before one or two or three people in that office with building with you have covid and based on how contagious that shit is which is basically now at the level of measles you might be wearing like if most people are wearing n95s or you know there, there's yeah. like uh, let me show you something so i haven't really actually felt the need to wear this yet because i don't think it's necessary but I've got this. This is my respirator that I might wear out to a fucking grocery store. It's got it's a P100 yeah. filter, right? Yeah. And I might catch looks and shit, but at this point, I don't. I don't know. I'm almost. I'm past the point of really caring because. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I've, I mean, like, I, I look, uh, people not only need to do what they need to do to be safe, but then also take care of the people. And that's what, yeah. that's what we've seen more than anything else. I mean, I, I knew this beforehand. Like I said, I knew from the climate change thing and a lot of environmental issues that people really don't care. Yeah. Right? They, they don't care at all unless it's on, like I said, something that makes them feel good about themselves, make them feel like they're magnanimous yeah. right, as far as all this is concerned. But they're not concerned about doing something just for the simple fact of doing something that, that's good. I mean, yeah. that, that's that's what we're seeing. You know, you it's like the society's... Uh, 
uh, safety and care and concern. Not even I can't I can't say with my own because ultimately you're taking care of yourself with the vaccine. Yeah. But even if you're concerned for whatever reason, right? You do something for a greater good. You should, but we've seen now that that's something that is uh, not uh, uh, prevalent here in the United States society. I, I don't I hate to tell people this, but this has just been borne out. I mean, I was not shocked that things have gone the way that they've gone as far as addressing this from a, 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 a sympathetic, a logical, mm -hmm. uh, intelligent aspect. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shocked at all. I, I, it, it's gone down. I can't say I, I would have, if you'd have asked me like two years ago, would I know like it's going down exactly as it's going down now. Mm -hmm. But this is indicative of a lot of the things I've written about and talked about over the past mm, 10 years or so. Right. Yeah. My my faith in man is one of they have given me very little to be or have faith in. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But um even at my I guess worst or you know, like whatever issues I might have as a person on this earth, because we all got our particular problems, it's never been one of uh disconcern about people or the world in general. Right. But I just have to guard myself, and I know it's the same with you. Maybe not exactly the same, but to a certain extent, you have to guard yourself because you can't ever be vulnerable to people who don't care anything about you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. You know, because you might wear that mask here in Texas and somebody, you might actually get into a fight. I can actually see some people here <laughs> actually like confronting you physically yeah. over just that. You're yeah. not messing with anybody. You're not doing anything. I yeah. can think of like a couple of bars, like especially in the surrounding suburb areas, because I live in the downtown area where some shit kicking bar, you know, there's a, there's a, a restaurant about an hour outside of here. It's called Trump burger. Right. And, uh, actually Trump, Trump burger, Trump, Trump burger. burger, Jesus. Trump burger. Right. Yes. I was like, yes. What? Did I hear I that guarantee, right? <laughs> I guarantee if you wore that mask in the Trump burger, you're taking your life in your hands. You take, you take I'm sure. Yeah. I'm joking, but you're actually taking your life in your hands. But that's how insane it is. To be quite honest with you. You know, and not no. just here in Texas, probably Florida too, Georgia. You know, what's, you know what would suck, though? I, I I don't know. I wonder if Trump Burger has, like, really good burgers. Could you imagine a place called Trump Burger had, like, the best fucking, like, legendary, like, they just had some secret sauce that was, like, off the fucking chain. You're like... I bet you they do. Oh, I bet man. you I would not be shocked. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, oh, can I, I got, and they don't do delivery. You got to go inside to get it. Me. You're like, God damn it. Oh, this. That's funny. That's, I had thought about that. That's, you're probably right. You're probably right. <laughs> Shit, yeah. I might, I might, I, I might need to go somewhere do a reconnaissance mission. Go in there, have all yeah. the Trump gear on. That America, just, just, just go in there and just grab a burger. Yeah, pass, just right? wear a MAGA hat, just for you know, and hold your breath. Hold your breath while you're in there. Grab your fucking burger and get the fuck out. And it's like practice, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> go through drills. Right? Yeah, right. Just get ready for this. <laughs> oh fuck. I mean, I just look. I'm at the point now, like you said, I'm just worried. All I can do is worry about, like, it doesn't disaffect the people it is I love. I mean, I've told you the story. I'm not going to name the person uh, who it concerns, but, you know, like I had a friend, he was older, 65, mid-60s. His wife was 65. I will give their ethnicity, ethnicity up. They were black. And I thought that they had got the vaccine shot. Right? Mm -hmm. So he got, he got the Rona. And his wife got it also, but she got it real bad. And she had uh, she had to go in for a uh, bypass surgery. I think uh, 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 two double bypass, whatever surgery for a heart. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so she got it, and they won't they won't operate on you till the infection clears up with the with the with the Rona, right? So she ends up in the hospital, and uh, he's like, "Well, yeah, my wife is in, in the hospital." Now I'm upset about that because I, I I love the guy. So. Um, I'm like, well, man, you know, everything's going to be okay. The whole night. And then she ends up on the ventilator. And then the last conversation that we had, um, I said, well, it could have been worse if you guys had not got the vaccine. And then he, he got like real short with me. And then we got off the phone. Mm -hmm. And I sat down for about five minutes. I'm like, what? I said, I know it's not in my head. I mean, so, and then mm -hmm. I said, they didn't get the vaccine. Yeah. And then she ended up dying. And I can't lie. I, I, didn't, I, could, not go to the, I could not go to the funeral. I could mm -hmm. not go there and drop crocodile tears. Mm -hmm. What I really wanted to do is just grab the motherfucker and be like, how the fuck could you be 65 years old and not get the goddamn vaccine? How can you believe this fucking bullshit out here and 
put your life and your wife's life in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 but of course, I'm not going to make that kind of scene. You know what I mean? It, it, I, I just, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't deal with it. Seriously, yeah. I could not deal with it from a, an emotional level. So that's the only way I can get through it now. It's like, yeah. look, man, people going to do what they're going to do. And it, even if it's somebody that I, I love and they decide not to get it, I can't, even if they die, I can't, I can't feel anything. I, I really can't because how could you do this to yourself? You believe this conspiracy bullshit so much that you would, even some people try to equate it, like some black people try to equate it to the Tuskegee experience, right? And I'm like, look, if there was some treatment that they were giving white folks and not giving us, yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna sit back myself. Well, right, yeah, oh, right. oh, oh, I got a problem. You got yeah. a point there. I yeah. said, but this is the same way they're giving everybody else, right? And, yeah. And the whole nine. This is this is something they're giving around the world. You know, mm -hmm. then you got, but then they say, what about depopulation? I'm like, oh, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, that's I'm like, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's crazy. It's like you think like these cats had this type of. Machiavellian ability to just control, like we're gonna kill twenty percent of the people in Africa, or fifty percent of the people in Europe. Or I'm like, dude, they don't have that. What, 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 what rationale is there for depopulation, right? I mean, yeah, really. I mean, they need their worker bees if nothing else, right? Yeah. I mean, why are they trying to de depopulate? I mean, like, okay, well, all they care about is like, as long as we got enough money to. If anything, I will maybe say it's impossible. Let's say you're just trying to, okay, well, they're trying to kill off the refuse. No, everybody that doesn't have a job. Everybody that they feel is a drain on society. They, if they actually were just trying to like kill them, or if there was some type of ability for only people of a certain class level to get this, you know, are we trying to kill off them because they ain't got a job or whatever? Uh, okay, it's impossible, but okay, at least that makes some type of, of sense. But just to say like they're just trying to kill off people just rampantly, and then also when it comes to vaccine, who's the one that got it before anybody else? I know he got it. Rupert Murdoch. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Fox News, all the you can't walk in there. This dude, ninety years old, he said we say we say that bullshit to them dumbass people through our through our propaganda machine. But I'm not, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna walk walk into these offices and, and and take a chance of one of you motherfuckers killing me. <laughs> he said yeah. that's not happening, right? And I think that he wouldn't be because that was the thing that really tripped me out. I think if he wouldn't have been ninety years old, which he is now, I think like maybe ninety nine, maybe over mm -hmm. it, maybe a, close to it. So he's like, I'm not going to put myself in harm's way. I yeah. know what's happening. I mean, and that's the thing more than anything else. If if anything, rich people, specifically rich white men, would be averse to getting this. But they get their shots like with the quick. You ain't yeah. heard no. Think about this now. How many rich white men have you ever heard come out and say the vaccine is bullshit? I'm not getting it. It's always some middling middle class white folks or people that's in the lowest rung society say that shit. You ain't hear nothing from a class perspective here in America, across the globe really, but definitely here in America where they say, no, nah, I'm not taking that shit. Yeah. I'm not taking that shit. They all took it. That's the that's the main thing. You you haven't heard CEO say that they weren't going to get it. You ain't heard somebody like Jamie Dimon say that. <laughs> you ain't heard Barry say he wasn't going to get it. Nobody has said it. It's only been people who are stupid enough to think that the entire system is concentrated and focused on them individually. Yeah. What the hell? You think you think Jamie Dimon sitting in Citibank right now concerned about some podunk fucker? You know what I mean? Like if it's this grand <laughs> yeah. class thing where you say like, oh well, it this cabal, it, it, it just gets it gets too insane. It gets too insane. Yeah. These are the same people that say that they don't believe in the Illuminati who now describe everything as being the Illuminati except calling it the Illuminati. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's everything. What well, is the Illuminati? Well, no, it's not that. You know, it, it is. Admit it. Yeah. The, I mean, COVID's kind of, it's uh, been a doorway into that way of thinking about things, you know? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a systemic level, which is impossible. You would have to give, you would have to give these people godlike status. Right. Yep. And I think that's the thing. Like, I mean, I've, I've worked in corporate America over 25 years now. No, I was at the lowest rung. Don't get me wrong. That's about the best I can make it in. I gotta go in. <laughs> I go in. Yeah. I'm low on the total pole. I can just get in and get out. <laughs> That's it. But yeah. that being said, you have to you have to say, like in all these offices that I've I've worked in or whatever, that there is some upper, 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 upper level that I don't know nothing about. Now I don't know what's going on in some of those, you know what I mean? Because they, they do all kinds of stuff. But nothing like you, you know, they talking about like, you know, like drinking children's blood and all this other bullshit, and whatever. It's just it's just insane. Yeah, it's impossible. It yeah. is literally impossible.
Yeah. You know, like, I, I, I mean, Bago, it, people I thought were a lot smarter than this have come out with some of the most outrageous and asinine things in the world who think that they understand epidemiology, chemistry, biology, math, and don't know shit. Don't know yeah. shit. And then they'll mm-hmm. post stuff from other people, especially, as I said, I'm an electrical engineer by trade. I know math or nothing else. And I'm like, one time somebody came on my Facebook page and they were, they, they did this graph. It was like a, it was like a five-year-old had done this graph because it had all of the, the numbers that they had got from the CDC. And then they tried to introduce their own numbers into it. It was like a straight line. It was like statistical analysis. So I went back and I showed him where he, where he was doing wrong, but there was never an admission from that person or even another individual who backed him up that it was wrong. Right. It, it, it's still like, no, no, he's still going to rock with that until the end. So, I mean, that's what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Like, I, I have had to dial up my life back and say, you know what? I can't waste no more time on this. Right. I mean, I still write about it, but I'm not engaging with anybody who thinks that it's a conspiracy or the vaccine or kill folks because it's just it's it's exhausting. It, it's kind of like at this juncture. Is it like at this juncture, me going to a KKK meeting and thinking like I want to change people's mind? You know what? After all these hundreds of years. Right. You are still going to think like Jews are shit. Black folks are, are animals and all that stuff. At this juncture, why, why waste my time? You know, I write about it and tell you what's going on, but I'm not going to try and change anybody's heart at this juncture. Environmental climate and all that. I'll introduce it to you. I'll talk with you about it, but I'm not trying to change. I'm not trying to go to the local watering hole here in Texas and some poda. I'm not trying to go to Trump Burger and have a conversation about climate change and what's going to happen when all best estimates now. And you see how it's changed over time where they pretty much acknowledge that it's going to be six degrees C by mm-hmm. the end of the, of the, uh, of the, of the century. Right. Yeah. That, that's like, that's best case scenario. <laughs> that's well, best yeah, case scenario now. I just want to say like the thing with COVID and this is kind of the final point is that sure. uh, what you just said there is like the way that they're shifting the conversation slowly over the past two years is like a fast forward of like how they're talking about climate, right? Because originally they were like, this thing's happening. Let's not get above 1.5 C. Okay, let's let's stay under that, 1 that C. Was, yeah, let's, that was, yep. no, let's not get above 350 parts per million. We're like way over 400 now. They're like scientists and IPCC and all these really pretty conservative organizations that are like, you know, synthesizing data. Not all the data, just certain forms of data. They're like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of impossible now to assume that we will be able to to mitigate climate disruption to the point or climate global warming to the point where uh, we will not surpass 1.5 C. 2 C is very realistic at this point. They may not fully want to get into the territory you just mentioned of like all the way up to 6 C, which is fucking insane. You can't even like comprehend the hellscape that the planet will be at that point. You can't imagine what it would be like to live on a planet that warm that chaotic um but yeah the the conversation with covid is like a a, a microcosm of that where it's like slowly building cl- consensus and and general like acceptance of this uh horrific thing that's occurring on a global level so i think that's the main thing i think that's what's so like fucked up for me is like drawing comparisons between covid uh, and the COVID response to climate and the climate response. Um, I see those, I see those parallels really strongly. 